Bonjour, bonjour, messieurs and mademoiselles. Today we are not going to be talking about the future. We're not going to be talking about the present. We are going to be talking about the past. We are going to be talking about the history of cells. Now, the discovery of cells. Before the microscope people believed that diseases were caused by curses or supernatural spirits. People had no idea bacteria existed. Well, the microscope changed all that and enabled scientists to view and study the cell. The cell is the basic unit of all living organisms. It is the smallest unit of matter that possesses every bit that is life. So, let's talk about the players. We start off with Robert Hooke. He is up here in the corner, except we actually do not know what he looks like. Because him and Isaac Newton got into this huge fight. And Isaac Newton burned all of his pictures and photographs after he had died. So, in 1665, he used a compound light microscope to study cork. The normal cork that you see up on the wall around you. So, cork here has little boxes. And he named each of these little boxes a cell because it reminded him of a small room that the monks lived in, which were called cells. He also was able to look underneath his light microscope and created the book Micrographia, which he showed never before in seen pictures of small stuff underneath his microscope, such as this flea here in great de de detail. People had never seen this before. And everybody could read this book because it was pictures. Pictures, I tell you. Pictures. So, next we have Anton von Leeuwenhoek. In 1674, he made the first simple light microscope and made one lens. And he used it to look at pond water. And he saw little moving things. He also saw bacteria with teeth scraping. And he named these things animalcules. Now, he was ridiculed by all of the public and sort of poo-pooed but then he got Robert Hooke on his side and people were like what these things exist really cool so originally people thought of spontaneous generation living things coming from non-living things you put a broom in a corner let it sit there and you got mice you put hay in your barn and it produced mice living things from non-living things Spontaneous generation. Um, well, we took a look with Francisco Reddy that thus proved spontaneous generation with his meat in the jars experiment. So he put meat in jars and he got flies. Well, then he put meat in jars with lids. No flies. And then he used what is called cheesecloth or a breathable material. And he put it over top and no flies. Therefore, just because you have meat does not mean you'll get flies. Now, the second person to help this out was in 1861 with Louis Pasteur. He used a swan neck or S-shaped flask, which allowed air into the nutrient broth. So originally, he took nutrient broth that had all the delicious yummy stuff, and he left it open to the air, and he got bacteria inside. Well, then he took it, and he lit a candle and he sealed it up after boiling it and after a while he took it out and looked at it and there were no microorganisms because it had been boiled and then sealed but then people were like but everything needs oxygen oxygen needs for life so he created this swan neck flask here which allowed oxygen to come in but it trapped the microbes in this little s shape or the u shape in the s shape neck Therefore, when he tested the broth later on, there were no microorganisms. So, in 1856, this also helped Rudolf Virchow develop the idea of biogenesis. The key word you need to know, biogenesis, meaning living cells come from other pre-existing living cells. Bio meaning life, genesis is to create. So, all of these people came together and created what is known as the cell theory. Number one. All living things are made up of cells. Now, this was done by two German scientists. Schleiden, in 1838, who was a German biologist, a botanist, said that all plants are made of cells. Then Schwann came along, who was a German zoologist, and said, well, all animals are made of cells. So we squash them together and say, all living things made of cells. Next, we get, the cell is the basic structure and function unit of life. It is the smallest thing that is living. 
Number three, we have all cells come from pre-existing cells. And now, that was from their child. And again, spontaneous generation was disproven. Living cells come from living cells. We have two types of cells. We have what is known as prokaryotes that do not have a nucleus. And we have eukaryotes which have a nucleus. So let's break down these words. Pro meaning before, karyo meaning nucleus, and you meaning true. So prokaryotes. Pro before karyotes nucleus. Before the nucleus. Therefore they have no nucleus. Now looking at eukaryotes. You meaning true. Karyo meaning nucleus. They have a true nucleus! <laughs> so looking at these a little bit in more detail. We have prokaryotes. Cells lacking internal membrane-bound structures. There are no organelles. It is mostly free-floating stuff. No nucleus. We have a nucleoid region, which is right here. It's all of the DNA is sort of just floating in one region. And it does not and it does not have linear DNA like you or I. It has circular DNA. Now, the examples for prokaryotes are going to be bacteria, such as Erythria coli, or you know it as E. coli that live in your intestines. And then we have Staphylococcus aureus, or you may have heard of a staph infection that causes the skin infection. Finally, we have eukaryotes, which contain membrane-bound structures, which are called organelles. Then it contains a nucleus, surrounded by a nuclear envelope. We have linear DNA. We are multicellular or single-cellular organisms. And examples are plants, animals, or yeast. Now, again, organelles are membrane-bound structures within eukaryotes, and each has a specific function for the cell's survival. And remember, the nucleus is the central membrane-bound organelle that manages all cellular functions. So, recap. No microscopes, spontaneous generation! No clue where things happen. All of a sudden, microscopes. We got cells. We got animalcules. Hey, things come from living things. Then we've got our cell theory. Cells are the basic unit of life. All things made of cells. Cells come from other living cells. Then we've got our two types of cells. We've got prokaryotes, no nucleus. We've got eukaryotes, true nucleus. And okay, bye now.